So next we have uh, Tao Shen, um, who is a researcher on the Pando team at Ken Labs. Uh, he has over 15 years of experience in distributed systems and Web3 data infrastructure. And today he's going to give a talk about applying data mesh principles to Web3 data infrastructures. Welcome, Tao Shen. Uh, hello, everyone. Is there anybody heard of data mesh before? Yeah. Uh, for past few days, I discussed uh, with multiple teams, and uh, I introduced Pando uh, to the community. And uh, today is kind of uh, I want to introduce data mesh as kind of Pando's ambition in future. Uh, we wanted to incubate our, we can have a kind of brainstorming how to apply in data mesh principles to Web3 data infrastructures. Okay, uh, in this picture, you can see maybe about the, for, party, for past 40 years, there is a traceable evolution from a data warehouse to data lake and to data mesh, driven by the need to overcome certain architectural limitations. Uh, data warehouse is a, is a kind of uh, um, data management systems that design and enable to support uh, business intelligence and, uh, and data analysis techniques. Data lake is a uh, it's a data infrastructure to combine the flexibility and the cost efficiency. Uh, it's a cost efficiency solution for, uh, for, for data management systems and that is uh, stored data in, in its native row format and until it's needed, it needed for analysis. And the data lake house is uh, combine the cost efficiency of data lake and the data warehouse and the features of data warehouse. Data mesh is a new model of, of data management systems that is put the domain as the first class concern and put the platform thinking into data infrastructure and see product as a, see data as a product. Uh, what is data mesh? I want to introduce uh, data mesh very carefully. Uh, this term is uh, coined by Zamak in 2019 and is based on four fundamental principles. As you can see, that's the domain ownership, data as a product, serve service platform, and the federal governance. The domain ownership principle mandates the domain teams to take the responsibility for their data. The data as a product principle projects a product thinking onto an analytic data. This is principle means that there are consumers beyond the domain. That is, the domain could be served for another domain. The idea behind the server service data platform is uh, to adopt the plat platform thinking to data infrastructure. A dedicated data platform teams provide uh, domain agnostic uh, functionalities, tools, and systems to build, execute, and maintain interoperable data products for all domains. That is uh, part of uh, Pando's responsibility. And the federal the governance principle achieves the interoperability of the all data products through a way of standardization. Here is a picture about uh, server service data platform and enable teams and the federal governance 
enable teams will take the role of of build a kind of end-to-end -end domain analysis, analytic pipes between the infrastructure layer of governance layer. Okay, how mesh organized? The mesh emerges when teams use other domains data products. That is the basic uh, principle of uh, data mesh. Now I want to introduce how currently Pando is. In my opinion, uh, IPFS and uh, Faircoin is naturally an open data infrastructure for data mesh and data lake. And the Pando will build a uh, a metadata and the governance layer over IPFS and the Faircoin. And then we can build a server service computation mesh over the data platform. And then we can build a domain layer over that. That is the uh, text text from Pando point of view. Pando currently build the data platform in a way of open data lake. The, the data pipe is quite simple. You can see here in the left is uh, ingest the service. In the right is for downstream consumption. In the middle of the pipe, there is a open data lake have three layer IPFS, Faircoin, and the Pando, and uh, we can we can have raw data inside, and then we can generate it from process data from the raw data. The process data is very important, as every everybody knows that that is golden golden data. Uh, so currently, Pando integrates uh, many uh, metrics, storage metrics and the retrieval metrics data into Pando and uh, it is from a reputation system platform in Faircoin ecosystems. From the storage pipe and the retrieval pipe, we can leverage reputation systems to let storage client and the retrieval client to make a decision to choose which provider you can use, you can work with. This, this picture is quite a formula with the uh, uh, Juan's sharing many times. Uh, what's his, what is going on with Pando? Currently we have Pando MVP and the IPLD database inside. And we have reputation data and the blocking data onboarding and the DID and the ownership related features is under developing. That is the current status of Pando. Is there any questions? Sorry, <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, because today is an uh, uh, analytic day, so uh, just uh, as I mentioned before, uh, yes, I should to introduce Pando as a first. Pando is a kind of set chain metadata service of uh, Faircoin network. It, uh, you know, most of the data didn't reach the consensus bar of uh, global state chain. So, for example, the metrics data and the measurement data, they need to start somewhere along with the Faircoin main chain. That is the side chain of Faircoin. Um, one question on that uh, reputation system you had. Um, so I think it's the last slide. Um, so I'm wondering 
how you are managing the fact that the relationships are not, um, they are not equal, right? Like a relationship that the retrieval client has with the retrieval provider is one directional and the same thing for the indexers and the storage clients. So because you don't have, because these relationships are unilateral, how do you manage the reputation? Because usually for the reputation system, like it's a bit of a, a tit for tat, like you, you give me something, I'll give you something. And so you, you kind of get this reputation system going on. If I understand correctly about your question, um, there there are many uh, there are uh, maybe three or four uh, roles in the reputation systems. The first one is a data provider. Data provider is, uh, for example, do you bought uh, any any bots to test uh, to query to capture some the behavior of providers and then store the data to Panda. And then there is another role is reputation service. Reputation service will, will consume this data, this matrix data generated by the provider and then compute some matrix to reputation scores and then stop back to Panda. And other clients, for example, the retriever clients and the storage clients, we could fetch these reputation scores to make a decision to work with which provider to work with. It is a, it is a kind of incentive closed loop of the whole network. Okay, so yeah, maybe we can talk offline. Okay, for thank you. You mentioned governance a couple of times in the the data mesh, and th that's like there. The yeah. So how how does governance fit into the work that you're doing now with the Filecoin chain and reputation data? Can you speak about that? Uh, this governance is, uh, in my opinion, is quite an open topics currently. Um, it could be fair complex kind of organization or community to do this governance to let, let uh, different domain, domains to use other domains data. Uh, just my, my, my thoughts on, on governance. Yeah, I think it's, it's an open question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, my purpose is leverage data mesh to brainstorming new ideas based on IPFS and the Faircoin. Thank you. 